Hey everybody, just wanted to show you a little bit of what I've been doing as a locksmith uh, for the past off and on year. Uh, just uh, first starting off with my equipment. I can uh, show you really quickly what I have. The main one, especially for automobile, is going to be a key machine. And let's see where I can go. Here it is. Here's the very expensive key machine. It's a Condor XC Mini Master Series. And basically it has a detector tool, which is on the left there, and the cutting drill bit on the right. Today I wanted to show you how to create a key from scratch for a Ford Freestar. So the first thing you're going to need is this tool called the Easy Reader. It looks something like this. And this fits the majority of the, the, the Fords. You can see the, the groove is it's a key uh, known in the industry as an H75. H75. So this one will fit into the groove of your car so you can get the readings of the, uh, the pins or the tumblers inside the lock. And I'll show you that in a second. Basically you're going to use this easy reader to read the cuts on the door lock. So you see how this key slides right inside? So you can you can know that this will will work on this door. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to read it. So before you start, you want to make sure you got all your tools ready. Number 1, easy reader. Never lose this very expensive key. Number 2, a lubricant such as WD-40. This will help loosen up all the all the tumblers or the pins that you're going to be reading so you can get you know a cleaner reading versus some uncertainty between the pins okay and the third thing is going to be a notepad such as this a place where you can just write down the pins uh, as you're going along now there's a particular method in reading the pins it's not straightforward like one two three four five um, so you have to um, also be aware of the way in which you read, which is I'm going to show you in a minute, and the last thing, of course, is a is a pen, so you can write down. Um, of course, this is going to be quite difficult when it's raining. I've done plenty of jobs where it's raining and the weather is just not complying, and you can't really write anything down as you're doing it, as you're trying to read the door of a locked car, for example. So um, better to use your me memory and then to go back to some shelter inside your car for example, the back of my car where I have some space and write down uh, the numbers. Okay, So that's it, that's all you're going to need for the uh, for the reading and then after that I'll show you the next step. Okay, so first you're going to spray the uh, door lock with WD-40. Alright, then you're going to stick this key in just to you know, spread that uh, lubricant all over the, uh, the tumblers. Okay, and now this comes the, the important part of reading it. Like I said, there's only six pins maximum that you can read from a door on a Ford. So you have to know this from before starting. Uh, there's a total, of course, of eight cuts on a key. Um, but, you know, the, the door doesn't need that much. So they don't spend so much on the door. They only, they, they only have six, sometimes even five. The majority of the times you'll see five cuts only on the door and eight of course on the ignition. What I want to show you now is the, is the importance of knowing on which side of the key to start on. The way in which you would determine this is by first inserting the key all the way in, pulling the reader, this red uh, metal slider, out a little bit, slightly, not all the way because it's going to slide all the way out if you do so, just slightly out and then grabbing onto the to the key and seeing if it comes out. If it doesn't come out, this is your starting point. This is where you're going to read your first pin. Now I'm going to show you how it's going to look if it's not st sticking. So that's going to be on the other side. So the way in which you pull this out, you have to slide the reader back in and then this will come right out. So you take it out. I'm going to flip it on the other side just to show you. You see I stick it all the way in and then I slide the reader out and you'll see that now it's going to come out a little bit. You see that? It came out just one dot. So this is your second side you're going to read on. So you're going to put this back in. 
and you're going to start reading it on this side, okay? So we'll leave it like that all the way in. We'll get our paper ready, paper and pen ready. And the way in which you're going to start recording this, like I said, there are eight pins in total, or eight cuts in total that you have to be able uh, to get in order to cut a key uh, for this car. So you're going to have here your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. However, like we said, we're, we can only get six total cuts from the door. Okay, we cannot read the ignition with this EC reader. It will not allow it. So we're going to only stick to the door. So we have the way in which the EC reader reads it is slightly backwards. So, like I said, there's only a maximum of six. So you omit the seven and the eight in this case. So you put question mark, question mark. And then for the seven and eight. And then with the first reading that you get from this side of the door, it means it's your six because you're working backwards from the lock. Since there's only six pins, you start at number six. So number six is going to be here. Then, since, the, since these tumblers are both on the top and on the bottom, you're going to have to switch the key over to read the one on the bottom, which is supposed to be your fifth one. So since we, we rather just read all the three pins on one side and then move on, we're going to have to skip this one and then get the get the fourth reading and then skip this one and then get the second reading and and then so on and so forth so you'll see as we go along so there's a total of here one two three four five six cuts that we have to read okay so we'll start here with the first cut and you'll see here there's a little tiny uh, it's like rain or teardrops on this easy reader let me show you a little bit closer you see that it's kind of hard to focus on there but there are little teardrops right in the in between here basically it's telling you if it if there's indicator slides on on one of these two where the cut is so for example there's an I slide this reader back and gently push it back there's a marker there that will try to tell me where exactly that pin is and as soon as I feel any sort of resistance, that's when I know that is the right pin. So right now it's lined up with number two. So I'm going to write down number two on here. So this is two, and this is blank. And then we're going to number the the cut five is blank. So now we're going to move on to the next one. So the next cut, you, like I said, when you want to push this back, you see it's locked in there. So you have to push this pin in, then you can you can just scooch it just another dot. Like that's what that's why the dots are on the bottom of this key to help you know how far back to pull it. Okay? So I pull it the second notch back. So now I pull the reader back and now I push the key back in so it locks on the second or the uh, the fourth pin and now I can slide this reader and you see now I got a new reading and now it's landing on number four so we'll write a four on here All right. and now we have uh, the third one we want to read from this door where you always start you know on the side that you always start you always get three pins okay I mean for you know the work that I've done again I pulled the key back I slid this back and now I can go for the second, for the third reading. And this one's number five. It's showing a cut on five. So I'll just write here for the cut number two. It'll be a, a five cut, meaning the depth will be a number five. Um, so that's it for one side. And now we can just remove this key and start reading it on the opposite side. And first, like I said, you pull this back. So you can slide the key one notch out and then you're going to push it back in and you're going to read it now on the opposite side because the key is flipped and so is the reader. So just to make it easier, I'm reading a three. So again, we're starting from back, from the back. So this reading will be for cut number five. And cut number five says it's a cut three. So we write three here and then we move on. We push the reader back in so we can slide the key another notch out 
and then we pull the reader back out and then we push the key back in so it can find that reading and it seems like I didn't pull it back enough because I'm getting the same cut so now I pulled it back out and now I'm getting a new reading which is four so cut number three is going to be a four right see right here and sometimes it could be tricky you might have to wiggle it a little bit to get a cleaner reading you see I tried it again and now I'm seeing a three so now I'm gonna switch it to a three that's why it's very very important yeah, and now the third cut, or the number one cut, is the last cut, and I see it has also that that uh, pin, so I'm going for, looks like it's about a three and a half to a four, so this one I'm, I'm a little bit doubtful, but I'll put three and then, and then four afterwards, because if you go from four to three, you can no longer uh, use a key, uh, so it goes from, you know, one two, three down, like the cut, basically you have to imagine this key, for example, and the depth of it, you know, of a pin dropping in here, knowing how, how deep it is, one, two, three, four, and that's how you know the depth of the pin, so. so uh, the last thing was to input our cuts, you know, our, uh, basically this is what I got for the door, it's a three uh, five three four three two question mark question mark so I have a program like I said called lockcodes.com and you basically can generate uh, different types of cuts I've gone through it all and now I see that I have only two options so there's only two possibilities um, for that cut and what you want to always do is grab just a very cheap key, um, one known as H75. This is a very, very common Ford key, very cheap as well, it costs like five cents um, when you purchase in bulk. So let me show you what that looks like. So, so basically, if there's only two different types of cuts, you want to just grab two separate keys. Sometimes you can use the same key um, over and over again depending on the depth, you know. So you start, for example, from two and then you can work your way down to three, four, five. So for this one we cannot reuse the same key. Um, so we're just going to grab two just in case. But, you, but this is what an H75 looks like. And there's H75 also printed on the back of that key. A uh, very cheap key. So you start off with that because at the end you do need to cut uh, a key that's, that has a chip in it because you need to program the key in order to crank the vehicle and this is true for, a, for a, the Ford Freestar that I just read the door lock of. So the key looks something like this, the, the programmable key looks something like this. This is an H92, it has a chip inside and this is already cut. I just need a computer after that to uh, be able to do the last um, the last part which is a programming and that typically takes about 10 minutes okay so uh, now we're gonna cut those keys that we talked about in different types of codes first we have to turn on the engine which I just did so I can turn on my inverter which powers up my key machine so basically since we're already doing uh, these specific cuts we already can program um, or just input the key code for this type of cut and the key code is basically a quicker way uh, ju just to pull up cuts for a particular um, model from a, manu from a manufacturer so once you know the manufacturer such as Ford a Chrysler then after that you can just input a uh, key code and that key code will generate the eight different cuts that we need for that key. So in this particular case we have key code, let me just put in Ford, we have key code 130, 1307X. So we enter that and then it tells us what types of keys are available and finally it tells us the cuts and where to place the key. So just to get a closer look basically of what I'm doing here I'm just going to be 
sliding this key in here up to the second marker, tightening it there, and just pressing cut and letting the computer, or sorry, the machine do the rest. Okay, we'll take this key out and hopefully this one will do the job. Let's go try it out. Okay, so what I so now that we have our key cut, we are going to try to make sure that it opens the door. You see, and it does. The door is opening, and then the next thing is to try it on the ignition. So we're going to try it here just to make sure it turns. You see, it's a rough turn, so it's not a clean cut of the key. So this is what this is how you determine whether or not the first cut is right or, or wrong. So like I said. You see the, the key operates the door but it does not operate the ignition because of those last two cuts. So basically uh, 7 and 8 are incorrect. So that's why we have, you know, we first use cheap keys like this. Um, and these key too we can just give to the customer for example to um, unlock their door in case they get their, their keys locked inside their vehicle. So it's also good for something else, you know, not everything goes to waste. So let's go cut that second key and see how that turns out. Okay, so now I'm ready to cut this, the second uh, key. So I've inputted already the uh, the new key code. And the only difference is going to be the last two cuts, like I said. So instead of having a 3-4, it's going to be a 4-3. So you see how this one is at the end, a 4 and a 3. And, you know, you make another video about how to read cut keys. Uh, Kills our battery, let's turn this off. And let's go try this new key now. Make sure it correct, turns the ignition now. You already know it, it's going to turn, so this is the right key. You see it's smoothly, but it won't crank the vehicle. You see, I'll just try to crank it, but since you don't have that chip programmed, it's not going to crank it. But that's how you make the right cut for any, for almost any Ford in the market right now, today, even the newest ones. This is how you can make a key from scratch. Basically, anybody that loses their key, flushes down the toilet, construction workers, you know, that just lose it in the middle of a job, people just randomly lose it, forget, or hateful kind of, you know, breakups, and, you know, the ex just throws the keys, and, you know, things like this happen every day. So this is really important to know, very helpful uh, for anybody uh, that would like to be a locksmith and that you know wants to practice things like this um, at, in their own time because I think too there could be more joy in just trying to learn it slowly and then building up um, eventually to become you know more of a master or an expert especially when your time is limited for example the customer is really impatient and it's a very you know uh, difficult day such as you know it was for me last night where it was raining very windy outdoors or very open area so um, yeah just better to be prepared okay so I hope this helps and um, good luck locksmithing